Please stay with us. Stay with us. When night is falling and fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, so you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me, yeah. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. Feel it breaking up like an echo.
Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. My girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible, but the truth is none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself, you can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith and meaning. Man, I am so excited for Alpha to hear start. It's actually going to start this Tuesday, and we get to go through so many different questions. Maybe you're new to the Christian faith, or maybe you don't know anything about the Christian faith, but you can ask the questions, you know, is there more to life than we're dealing with right now? There's got to be something more indifferent. Or who is Jesus? We hear the name sometimes Jesus, maybe you don't even know who he is, but what is he or who is he and why did he die? Did he even need to die for us? And these are some questions that we get to look at and we can openly answer and talk about and communicate about and, and discuss about. And this first Tuesday is our, our, this Tuesday is our very first session we get to do and it's at 7 o'clock. And if you haven't registered for it, I encourage you, go to our website, camelback.cc. And if you're watching online, you go to our website, camelback.cc. And you can register for today's, uh, today, but you can register for Tuesday. And I'll send you the Zoom link because we're going to do this all online together. And we all get to talk together um, all online as well. And we get to go through these questions and ask these questions and really find out what's, you know, who is God? Why do we have church? Why do we even pray? How do we even pray? And, and maybe there's questions you've asked and you've been in church for like 10 years and you're, maybe you're just too afraid to ask. I've been there and this is why I bring it up. Like I should know these things. But you get to ask questions that maybe you've always wondered before during, during these sessions. And I'll send you the Zoom link and I'll send you guys the guides each week. And it's going to be phenomenal. I can't wait for it. And I want you guys to know how awesome you are. You guys are amazing. And I want you to know God thinks that you're amazing. Regardless of what goes on through the week and what happens or what may have happened, God looks at you and he says, I love you. And that's so good to know that. And here at Camelback, we absolutely love you too. Um, guys, stand with me as we get into this next song. And you've got home or wherever you're at, you can stand, you can, you can sing with us too, but stand with me during this next song, and let's, let's sing to God. Let's, let's open up to him. If you feel comfortable, you can raise your hands to him and surrender yourself to him. Let him know that you love him, because he's a God that can handle anything. He is, and he loves us. So stand with me, 
and there's so many also, so many great things we get to do here on this campus and, and, in, the, and in our neighborhoods, in our community, because we've been so faithful in our giving. And you guys have been so amazing in it, too. During this whole crazy season, but there's two ways to give here at Camelback. You can go online, camelback.cc, or you can text Camelback CC one word to our number, 77977. And if you're here in the house, on the way out, you can go ahead and give, too. But I'm excited about today. Are you guys excited about today? Yeah. yeah. Guys, stand with me. Let's praise God. Let's worship him during this song. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. sing this power in the mighty name of Jesus. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. In every war he wages, he will win. No, I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story
a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the best. Acres of diamonds, people. Acres of diamonds. I started this last week, and uh, I want to, for the next, uh, this week and two more weeks. By the way, next week, I'm going to talk specifically uh, about something that you and I can do, and it doesn't really take that much, but if we're willing to do it, 
it will totally transform our job. And it, if we're willing to do it, it will also totally transform our relationships. You are not going to want to miss next week. And uh, um, last week I shared a story from Jensen Franklin's book, and I, I don't do this often, but I am, I am recommending you get this book. Get on Amazon, order it, Acres of Diamonds by Jensen Franklin. Make sure you get the one by Jensen Franklin. There was a book published years ago, Acres of Diamonds, a different book. But uh, grab this book. When you read it, go through it. It's not a hard read. You can handle it. Uh, when you read this book, go through it with a highlighter because you're going to want to highlight things. What I do from time to time when I read a book, usually when I read a book, I go through it with a highlighter so that I can go back through it at any point in time and really over the course of an hour, I can go th back through that book and remind myself of the key things that really stuck out in it. So I recommend you do that with this book, and uh, you will benefit from it greatly, not just as we go through these four weeks, but even beyond that. So, so do that. It, it will be beneficial for you, and uh, it's good to have you here. It is good to be in the house with God's family. If you're joining us in the internet and uh, online, or church online, or Facebook, at whatever you're on, your television in your family room, uh, your laptop in your bed, or wherever, on your phone, maybe in your car, wherever you are, welcome. It's good to have you part of our church family. Um, Ali Hafed, this is a story that in the introduction of the book, Jensen shares this story, and really it shapes, he will, from time to time in the book, go back to the story, because it, 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 it clearly gives an image to you and I uh, a, a very process that God is at work in our lives, in His church, and, and I, I just know that, uh, that we need to talk. If you missed, yes, if you missed last week, go back in the, uh, and watch it, and, uh, and, and you'll catch up with us. But Ali Hafed has a large farm. He had a large farm that he actually took care of himself. He had uh, um, um, orchards, he had gardens, and, and he took care of it himself, absolutely loved what he did, took care of his family, he and his camel and, 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 uh, and his plow and, and everything that he did. And he was, for all intents and purposes, a very comfortable man, almost a wealthy man. And he was content until he heard about a diamond mine. And he heard about diamonds and, and what their value was. And it just totally took him over. It took control of his thought process, and he actually sold his farm and hugged his wife and kids goodbye and left in pursuit of a diamond mine. When he left, he told his wife and his kids, he, he says, when I come back, we'll be fabulously wealthy, and you will be set for life. He went off in pursuit of diamonds. He went to Europe. He went on to Palestine, to Europe, and using up every bit of the money that he had, using all of his wealth, and, 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 and a window of his life in pursuing diamonds. In despair, he ended up in Barcelona, Spain, and in such despair, just leaped into the ocean. It took his life. He was never seen from again. But one day, the man who bought the farm from Ali Hafed was almost living the same life. He was plowing the fields with his camel. He was taking care of the orchards. And he, he, one day he took, every single day, several times a day, he would take his camel down to get water at the stream. And one day, taking his camel down to get water, just like Ali Hafed he noticed a glitter and a sparkle in the water and reached down and, and he found a diamond. And he actually found and discovered one of the greatest diamond mines of all time, the diamond mine of Golconda. It was the most magnificent diamond mine in history. Ali Hafed owned acres of diamonds and sold them for practically nothing to pursue diamonds elsewhere. The irony just goes on in this. 
Too often, you and I give up. Too often, we stop praying and asking God for something. Or stop praying for someone. Or we walk away, we give up on ourselves, or we give up on a relationship. And we make our own plans, and, and we step into our own plans, and, and we live our lives, and, and the time clock is going, and the timeline is going, and it's our timeline. But when we're following Christ, when we're following Christ and our relationship with Him is close, then we're living a life that is actually on His timeline. And it is a whole other arena. It's a whole other different thing. As believers, as we're following Christ, all too often we will make a decision or we'll make a wrong move and that will take us off this path of following Christ and it'll put us on another path that actually has a different destination. And sometimes we get distracted in life and, and we go in a different direct, different destination, different direction, which takes us, was going to take us to a different destination. And we, and we keep going down that path, usually un, until we reach a point that, that, we're, that we're recognizing the consequences of our decision. And it's not until usually until we feel the consequences of our decision that we begin to recognize, wait a minute, where am I going? What am I doing? What path am I on? Where is this path going to lead me? And we... We recognize that we're on a different path. And our Savior, with His grace and His mercy, welcomes us right back in. Right back into fellowship, right back onto the path. And we repent because we have actually stepped out in sin and we come back with regrets. And you know what, you know what He says? He says, that's okay. I already, I already, I already wrote that into your story. Coming, coming back to me, Jesus says, coming back to me with welcome arms to the degree that he accepts everything we've done, accepts us in spite of everything we've done, brings us right back into fellowship and right back into his family because of his grace and his mercy, and the richness of his salvation in that. We make our choices in life, and then our choices make us. We choose things in life, and those things in life shape who we are. I, I so often, as I'm preparing a message and digging into a subject, stop and think about my life. How, how did this apply in my life? How, how, what do I need to change in my life? How did this affect my life? And I, I just went back through the whole process. I, I grew up in church. I grew up in church, and I saw faithful up close and personal. I saw faithful in a way that maybe a lot of people don't see because I saw it in my mom and in my dad. They, they were so faithful with their lives in following Christ. And it's serving Christ. And not just them, but other people in the church. Up, up close and personal, I understood and saw what being faithful meant. And I, w and I went to school like, like most of us. And, 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 and then I, not only in school, I started working at a young age besides. And, and, and that, was, that was just the, the choices I made, the life I be. And I had a love for music. And I got involved in music. And that was a part of my life. And then years in construction and involvement and serving in the church in Virginia. For 20 years I was at that church in Virginia, just volunteering, serving, serving in the sound booth for years doing that. And every bit of it involved in production, involved in, 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 in creative arts and worship and, and, and every bit of it. God has used here for my life in Arizona. And you would ask Karen, she would, she would paint the same scenario for you. God has used everything in our lives in the past here 
in Arizona. Even our brokenness and our failures. He uses every single bit of it. And you and I are facing 2020. We're facing this year that just, we, we, most of us, we, well, all of us never expected it. All of us never wanted it to be the way it is. And yet it is the year that has been given to us. And it's affected our lives in so many ways. And it's affected some of our lives more than it has affected others. But it has affected all of us emotionally. It's affected all of us spiritually. Some financially, some not. But I believe with all my heart that God wants to use this time. We can't wait for 2020 to leave. But I'm telling you, God does not want 2020 to be a year on the calendar that was nothing but pain and discomfort and nothing good came out of it. He wants to take 2020 and have something good come out of it in our lives. I, I want to dig into that this morning. Do you know how diamonds are formed? Do you know how I found out how diamonds are formed? Years and years ago, watching the reruns of Superman. Superman disguised as Clark Kent. And Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen. And one of the episodes, Superman created diamonds by, only he could do this, right? by squeezing a lump of coal so hard that it turned into diamonds. That, that's, where I, that's where I first heard that that's how diamonds were made. Now, scientists will tell us that really coal has almost nothing to do with the process of making diamonds. But what, what it does have to do is to make a diamond, it takes time, intense heat, and extreme pressure. Time, intense heat, and extreme pressure, and you turn carbon into diamonds. I believe that God wants to make diamonds out of COVID-19. I really believe that. I believe that the very heart of God does not want this time that, that we're looking at with the windows of, oh my God, when is it going to end? And we don't know that. When is it going to be? When can we go back to normal? We don't, even, we don't, we don't honestly remember what normal is like. When is it going to be over? And I'm thinking time, intense heat, and extreme pressure. We've had this thing for almost seven months now. That's a lot of time. We live in Arizona. That's a lot of heat. COVID-19 has been a lot of pressure. It just makes absolute sense to me that this formula is going to produce diamonds. And in the spiritual realm and in the spiritual concept, it, 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 I, I'll open up a few scripture verses and we'll, we'll, we'll look at scripture a little bit and the pattern is exactly the same. And that's why when things get difficult, we don't run. That's why when things get hard, we don't quit. That's why we keep going. That's why we press on. And we're living right now going through this, and there are people all around us who are not going on. They're quitting. They're stopping. They're letting their All of our lives have to change some here. And, 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 you know, we need to protect the older group of people and people who are struggling with illnesses or have vulnerability. Man, we, we just need to protect them and keep them as comfortable as, can, as we can. And here, here at Camelback, we're encouraging all of our team to wear masks. We're encouraging everyone to feel comfortable wearing a mask. If you're comfortable not wearing a mask and you're social distancing, we purposely have spaced out the, the, the road so you can be. We, we, we want you to feel comfortable. And you need to know that before you come in, our whole team goes through this thing and all the chairs get sprayed and everything that you would touch, which there isn't much of, gets sprayed and, and the, the bathrooms and the doors, or everything is... We, we want you to know that we're treating this virus seriously because it is a serious 
virus, and it is not gone yet. But so much of our life just really needs to move forward. We go to Walmart. We go a whole bunch of places. We can find a way, as long as we're not feeling like we need to be protected to the degree of staying home, we need to move forward in our relationships. We need to move forward with our spiritual family. We need to move forward in meeting together as it's appropriate. And this has been pressure on all of us, some of us in ways that we don't even realize. I see some of the numbers, people. People are affected by this. Our suicide numbers have gone up a lot. Depression has gone up a lot. There are all kinds of issues that people are dealing with because of this, and that's a reality. But that does not change who God is and what he wants to do and what he wants to do in the middle of this. James, the brother of Jesus, look what he says. When all kinds of trials and temptations crowd into your lives, my brothers and sisters, by the way, don't resent them as intruders. Welcome them as friends. In other words, welcome COVID-19 as a friend. Because God, only God, can take it and use it as a friend. Welcome them as friends. Realize that they come to test your faith and to produce in you the quality of endurance. Did you know that endurance is a quality? Not just if you're a Navy SEAL. Endurance is a quality for everybody. He says that. He, he says producing you a quality of evidence. And then he says, but let the process go on until that endurance is fully developed. In other words, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't walk away from relationships. Don't walk away from family. Let the process go on until that endurance is fully developed and you will find that you have become a person of mature character and integrity. Some of you never dreamed that was even a possibility for you. A person of mature character and integrity with no weak spots. We need to remember the trials won't last forever. P uh, pain and fear and heartbreak, they, they won't last forever. We go through seasons and, and God brings an end to darkness. It's one of the things that he does. He doesn't leave us in, in seasons of darkness. He brings them to an end and, and then he uses them to display the light. And diamonds actually come in different packages. We, they don't all come the same. In this book, Jensen Franklin shares a story. It's a story about a young man who lives in an affluent neighborhood whose parents are, are relatively comfortable. And it's at the time in his life where he's graduating high school. And he turns to his dad and he said, for high school graduation, I really would like a sports car as my gift for graduation. And he thought, well, why not? My parents can well afford it. And, 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 and it's one of the things that in that area, in that whole uh, affluent area, parents commonly did for the, their kids when they graduated high school. They bought them a brand new car. And so it just seemed natural. So he and his dad actually went looking. They went to dealers. For several months, they searched for the car that he wanted. And they found one. He found a car. That, that was it. That's the one he wanted. Graduation day came. And his dad said, come on, come on into my study. They went into his study, and his dad, he noticed a package on his dad's desk. It was wrapped so beautifully with a, a red bow on top of it, and dad just slid it across the desk with the biggest smile on his face. He said, this is my graduation present for you. A little bit confused because of the size of the package, the, the son began to open it up. He took the bow off. He began to unwrap it, and there was a car. He lit, took the lid off the, off the box, and it was a Bible, a Bible. He, he put the cover 
back on it and slid it back across the desk and said, thanks, Dad. With the strongest voice of sarcasm that you could imagine, he said, thanks a lot. And he turned around, he walked out of the room, went up to his room, he packed up his stuff, and he left the house, and he left his dad, and he never saw his father again. And years later, after learning about his father's death, he went back to his dad's house. And in that same office, he sat down at the desk, looking around the room. It wasn't much different. He began to ruffle through some papers and look at some things, and he noticed that gift box off to his right. He grabbed that box and lifted the lid off of it, just reached in and pulled that Bible out. And as he just kind of flipped through the pages, a check fell out of the Bible. The check was made out to the exact amount of money that was needed to buy the car that he and his dad had landed on. You know, so often... We do the same thing. The son rejected the father's gift because it came in a package in a way that he was not expecting it. We think diamonds always come in a little red velvet box or, or a white box, and we think that's only the way they come. God never sends diamonds in that way. He always sends diamonds in a very different way. They never come that way. He often allows his children gifts to come in strangely wrapped packages. I believe it's the perspective that he really wants us to understand. We see it over and over in Scripture. You know, the reality is things are going to happen in our lives. This stuff is going to happen. Things are going to happen. Life takes its turns and its twists. And the Bible says it happens to the just and the unjust, to the good and the bad. And we're going to go through things in life. But I got to tell you something. Having a Savior, and listen, it's a broken world, and we are so in need of a Savior, especially every four years around here. Going through life, not just with a Savior, but going through life, hitting all the most difficult times and the celebrations in life with Jesus and following Christ is a whole different arena than not having him there. Sometimes things don't seem like gifts. As a matter of fact, they seem like trials. Trials, like a broken relationship, and God can take a broken relationship, turn it into a gift, and use it in your life and in my life, number one, to get our attention, and get our attention in a way that we would allow him to begin to work in our lives. He lets us have things like conflict in our life, conflict at work, conflict in our home, because through those very things, he does things in our lives that would never happen otherwise. He has our attention. We're at a willing place where we're allowing him. It could be a job loss. It could be a health issue. It could be depression. It could be anxiety. All of these things, we do not think of them as gifts. But in Romans 8, 28, he says, no matter what it is, Paul says, no matter what it is in your life, does not matter what it is. doesn't matter who sent it. Nothing matters. The thing that matters is God, whatever it is, will take it and use it for your best and for his glory. Your best and his glory. It's what he does. It's who he is. And that's our Savior. And that's our Lord who leads us through life. Too often, church, we push the gift back across the desk. And we say, no, thank you. That's, that's, that's really not what I asked for. And when we reject God's gift, we also reject his plan and his purpose for our lives. And we also reject, reject the acres of diamonds that God has for us.
we find ourselves all too willing to say, I'm done. I'm ready for a change. I, I prayed long enough. I, I put up with that kid long enough. I've, I've, and it's time. One of my favorite stories is Joseph. The story of Joseph, his life is full of these gifts. It's like Joseph's life is good news, bad news, good news, bad news. And the bad news always seems to be bigger than the good news. And Joseph's first gift is his brothers kidnap him, and, and they throw him in a pit, and then they pull him out, and they sell him in slavery, and he ends up in Potiphar's house as a servant. That's gift number one. And then he's in Potiphar's house. And gift number two is Potiphar's wife actually accuses him wrongfully of rape and he's thrown in jail for at least two years. That's gift number two. And then he meets Pharaoh's baker and cupmaker while he's in jail. And they have dreams and, and, the, the, and Pharaoh has had them thrown in, in jail because he had a bad day and he's ticked off at them so they're in jail and they have dreams and, and Joseph tells them the meaning of their dreams. And he said, this is going to come to pass. And when you stand before, when you're back with Pharaoh and you stand before him, tell him about me so I can get out of this jail. Gift number four is they forget, they get before Pharaoh, everything Joseph said comes true, and they get before Pharaoh, and they forget all about Joseph. But then, then, Pharaoh has a dream. Cupbearer remembers about Joseph telling him about his dream. He says to Pharaoh, wait a minute, when I was in, when you, you were ticked in that week, and here's Joseph, and he tells him about Joseph. And Joseph comes and he tells the king exactly what his dream means. Not only that, he tells him what he needs to do about it. And what happens? He's within a 24-hour period. It's acres of diamonds like you can't imagine. He is out of prison. And it, within 24 hours, he is actually made the second highest person in Egypt. The king, Pharaoh, is on top. And the king says, I will be the only one over you. And you have control over all of Egypt. Talk about acres of diamonds. But it would never have happened. It came over years in strangely wrapped gifts because God was getting Joseph ready for what he wanted Joseph to do. See, we think God just answered my prayers because I know. Asking God for something is not just about him giving you what you ask. It's also about him preparing you to be able to handle it. Because we just ask for something and we want it. But this is God we're talking about. He answers the prayer, but he gets you ready so that you can actually handle it. His thinking is so much more above ours. His ways are not our ways. He's God, and we are not. Paul, when he writes to the church in Philippi, he's writing to the Philippians. This is, this is, look what he says here. This is in the Message Bible. He says, I want to report to you, friends, that my imprisonment here has had the opposite of its intended effect. They thought, they thought if they put me in jail, they'll shut me up. And people will stop hearing this gospel about this Messiah, this Jesus that, that I'm talking about. And look what Paul says. He said, instead of being squelched, the message has, the message has actually prospered. All the soldiers here and everyone else too found out that I'm in jail because of this Messiah. I got to tell them the whole story. All of it. That piqued their curiosity, and now they've all, they've learned all about him. Not only that, but most of the followers of Jesus here have become far more sure of themselves in the faith than ever. <laughs> Speaking out fearlessly about God, about the Messiah. In, in Nazi Germany, Nazi Germany, Hitler had taken over almost all of Europe. 
He was in control. There was a family in, in, in Holland, in Amsterdam, that, that actually had a, the, the dad had a clock store, and he repaired clocks, and he sold clocks, and this was the Ten Boom family. And not only did they have that business, but they over and over again were taking Jews in and hiding them in their home and in their business and helping them escape. And they got caught, and the whole family got put into imprisonment, and, and Cory Ten Boom was one of the daughters. And Cory Ten Boom was put in a Nazi concentration camp, watched her sister die a horrible death, lost their whole family. Cory Ten Boom says, nothing touches my life. Having endured all of this, nothing touches my life that does not pass directly through the hands of my heavenly Father. To have that perspective after having gone through all of that. Corey Ten Boom also said, everything that I endure only better enables me to minister to others. Ministry was the very thought process. Faithfulness was the very life and thought process she lived. So how do you outlast your toughest season? Some of us would say COVID-19 is just going to be one of the toughest seasons of our lives. How, how do we outlast this? Or maybe you're going through something else in your life and in your family and, or in your relationships. But how do you outlast your toughest season? Let me just throw a couple things at you. Number one, we sing. See, you, you might think that the music that happens here on the stage before I, I get up to speak is entertainment or... or the reason we sing is to worship. David played. He was, he was unbelievably talented. He played and he worshiped. He worshiped God for who he is. We take that song that we sang this morning. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Those are the very words that Joseph said to his brothers when they finally got back together again. He said, listen, you, you guys, you took my coat off me. You threw me into a pit, sold me into a slave. You actually thought I was dead, and you meant it for evil. But God took it, and he used it for good. I, fr friends, we, we are so, I, I believe we are so unaware of how much God wants to do in our lives. And, and if we are willing to just begin to, just begin to allow him to do to move the needle in our lives, to allow him more access in our lives, to, to allow him more time to just move us in our relationship closer to him. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Why do we sing? We sing to worship God for who he is. He's God. There's no one like him. This is a broken world. You, we need a Savior. He graciously gave to us a Savior. And the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Do you know what that means? That means when we get together and, and we just start singing together. And it's not just our team up here. It's, it's all. We get together, we start singing our praise to him. He lives in those praises. He moves into those praises. Our relationship with him gets closer and richer and deeper. It is the very thing that he desires to do in our lives. Even when we're in pain and we have tears, taking our pain and our tears and turning them into praise because worship moves us closer to him. Second thing are words of truth. Words of truth. God's words. 1 John 3, 1 says this, I'm a child of God and he loves me. Some of you need to get a tattoo. You need to get that sucker tattooed right here. I'm a child of God and he loves me. Because we forget it. And we walk off on a different path, discouraged and distracted. and everything. Maybe, you need, maybe your, your, your eyesight isn't good and you need it real big. I'm a child of God, and he loves me. 1 John 3, 1. Truth. That's truth. Look what he says here in Psalm 37. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or 
begging bread. Never seen it. You know what that means? That means he loves us and he takes care of us because that's who he is. He loves us and he takes care of us. Watch my challenge. Ah, I tell you, here's a question. What is it in your life right now that does not seem like a gift? What is it in your life besides COVID? And it may just be COVID. What is it in your life right now that does not seem like a gift? And, and don't elbow, don't, don't. Are you willing to trust him with that gift? Are you willing to trust him with that gift? In this season, church, let's just bring people to Jesus. Let's just introduce people. To, let's just point to Jesus. Because people need the Lord. And let's love people where they are. But pastor, she's a Democrat. Love people where they are. Republican, Democrat. Love them where they are. Let's lean into humanity. Let, let me explain that. See, we're so caught up in our social media. We're so, so, so caught up in texting people. We're so caught up. In, and, and now it's even worse with, with this, with, with 2020 going on the way it is. Let me give you a challenge. When you leave here today, some of you might want to grab the pen from the chair in front of you, and you might want to write this right on, right on your hand or a piece of paper stick in your pocket. Call three people. Call three people. Over the course of this week, just call three people who you have not talked to in a while. And don't call them to talk politics, and don't call them to, to, to just call them to see how they're doing. Just call them to say hi to them. Because we've shut that whole thing down and, and, and we're not connecting. Let's, let's lean into humanity. Let's allow God over 2020. We, we, we have no idea what the rest of this year is going to be like. And our team is working on what we're going to be doing here. And God is doing some things that, that, that are just, that he would not have happened otherwise. You think coming in here and the room being changed like this is, is, is all we've done. First of all, this was done not for one reason, but for about three or four different reasons, most of them technical. And I didn't know if I was going to like it because I, I felt like if I come over here, well, then those people over there, i got to go over there, and then I'm going to be wearing shoes out on Sunday mornings. But I actually love it. I, I feel like everybody's closer. There's nobody in the back of the room now. Some of you are bummed because that was your seat, right? The back of the room. But there's so many things that have happened this year because of what we're going through. God is at work, and he's doing things. But I got to tell you, he wants to do more. Stand with me this morning. Let me pray with you. He wants to do more. And maybe you've never, maybe you're here this morning, and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you've never taken that step. Let me tell you, he desperately wants you to do more. He wants you to do that. And that's not a difficult thing. It's simply recognizing who he is. Jesus, the son of God, came to earth in the form of a baby, willingly allowed them to nail him to a cross. On the third day, he rose from the dead, proving without a doubt who he is and what he was here to do. He came to be our savior. You recognize that and believe that you become his child. And you step over the line from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. And you become a part of his family. You were already his idea. You were already created by God. But now you become a part of his family because you get adopted into his family by believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Let me pray with you real quickly. Father, thank you for, for your work in pursuing us, for all that you do in pursuing us and loving us. And God, I pray that we would simply, over these four weeks, and, and even as we head into the, into the rest of this year, we would simply pray, Lord, give me your eyes of opportunity. 
when I think of this virus and I think of 2020 and, and, and it's, it's, it just it seems like a trial and not a gift, give me the eyes that you have. Help me to see opportunity like you see opportunity. Help me, help us all, help us at Camelback to be willing to allow you to accomplish what you want to accomplish in our lives and through our lives to our community. Lord, I pray that deep in our hearts, we know this is right. Give us the courage to step into it, to pursue it, and to pursue you. And we just give you the praise on glory. And every head still bowed, every eye closed. If you're here this morning and, and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, would you do me a favor? Would you just simply put your hand up and put it right back down this morning? Real quickly. Yes. 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 <laughs> oh, Lord. All of heaven rejoice when one. This morning we've had four party happening in heaven and our family is larger. Father, thank you. Bless us as we leave here this morning. The hands that were raised, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just pursue them with your love. Draw them with your Holy Spirit into relationship with you and into relationship with us. We look forward for the things that you're going to do through them. In your name we pray. Everyone said Everyone said, yeah. yeah. And if that was you that raised your hand, tell somebody. Let some of our team know. Let your family know. Let your friends know. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. We'll see you guys next Sunday. <laughs> Amen.